Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Watch an Idiot Do a Thing. Starting this video because I figure there are not enough instruction manuals, sometimes video instruction manuals, for things that people might be interested in doing. The first project that I'm going to be working on is installing Arch Linux. I cannot find a very a very good installation like a clear guide for installing Arch Linux and I've installed it probably about a half a dozen times haven't really gotten it to work and I wanted to kind of do this project along with other things in the hopes of trying to get something working and to kind of push myself along uh, you know for other things so let's get started so let's see going to install it on a virtual box so that way if I screw it up and I am 90% sure I am going to screw it up because everything else has been screwed up uh, it doesn't wreck the system we can start new with something else tomorrow or whenever I decide to do this again so we're going to start up a new box call it arch that way it does all the presets next now, my computer has a crap ton of RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and give it 8 gigs of RAM for store, uh, for usage. Uh, let's see, we're going to create a virtual drive. Yep. The VDI, make it allocated so that way we can get started on it much sooner. I use my secondary drive. Let's see. I use a, well, technically a tertiary drive. I don't want to use my C drive because my C drive is just my boot drive. Everything else is allocated to, you know, other drives. Uh, let's see. So 100 gigabytes. Yeah, so that way I can actually kind of grow with it if I ever decide to do more things. The guide that I'm going to be using is this guide from Gets Hub. It's... My friend Ken swears by this installation guide. It says that this is the only dry, this is the only installation guide that he uses to install it when he was first learning Arch Linux. So we're going to be doing that method. I'll put that link down into the show notes for everything. Um, and let's see. Oh, uh, settings. We want to open up settings. System, processor. Go ahead and take that up to three. Uh, advanced. Yeah, let's go ahead and include that. Snapshot folder. We should probably move the snapshot folder over to the same one as where my system is working at. Uh... Shoo doo do yada yada yada. It's not doing too much else. Okay, that sounds good. Throw in the Arch Linux distro into the virtual drive, virtual optical drive. Uh, let's see. And right now that looks like it. So let's start up the system. Now, I want to learn Arch Linux because it's a system that allows you to dynamically build everything on the fly as to the way you want to build any, everything. Uh, you're not liking GNOME, you want to switch to uh, XKDE, then you can delete the GNOME interface and install XKDE. You'll lose a little bit of uh, in the translation, but for the most part, everything should remain the same. All right. Now, here we are at the boot menu. Uh, and we're going to tell it to boot using the Arch Linux uh, distribution. 
uh, the Arch Linux uh, live disk. It's going through everything. It's validating. It's running through the systems ops, uh, looking at what is and isn't there. All right, and here we are. Uh, we can do things right from the get-go because this is base. This is Arch Linux. Ostensibly, this is Arch Linux. When you get it started, it's just command prompts. So let's make sure that the system is recognizing all of my uh, media imports, specifically uh, my internet. Ping google.com. Let's go ahead and take that up. All right, so it's going through, it's constantly pinging in, you know, making sure that there's connection times and everything. Uh, as you can see, uh, 12 MS, that's kind of a bit slow. Probably got a little bit of load on the network, but nothing major. Uh, we're going to kill that with Control C. Uh, 26 packages, 20 sent, 26 received, zero packets lost. Uh, total suspension time. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, all this kind of bunch of stuff that I really don't know. Sorry. Uh, let's see. All right. So we know that that stuff is working. Next, we want to carve up the drives. So cg disk space slash well, forward slash or slash dev slash sda. Hey. Uh, non or uh, damage uh, dis uh, or damage dis protected uh, detected. This program will attempt to convert to GPT form or repair damage uh, to all this, but may not succeed. Well, of course, it's uh, detecting that there's no uh, form to this disk or that the disk is damaged because it's a technically a brand new disk. Enter. All right. So. Our first drive that we're going to open up, it's going to be at, uh, when you see this menu, just hit default. Like, don't tell it where to start at. You're going to lose some bytes, but nothing really major. Um, so we're going to enter on that. Uh, what's the size of this disk? We're going to enter in 100M, or 100 megabytes. Uh, enter that. Now, I happen to know the... Uh, the hex code for this, but I'm sure there's tons of people here that don't know. Let's go ahead and do capital L. Sometimes it's uh, particular and everything. So you're going to look through the system, and I believe it's on the next page, yes. Uh, on this page, on the far right side, fifth row from the bottom, it says EF00 for an EFI system. That is the format that we're going to be using on this. Uh, so EF00, uh, nope, that's R, F00. And then what are we going to name this? We're going to name this EFI. Now we go down to here. Well, let's go to that. And let's go ahead and write. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, whatever. Uh, next. This one, yep, starting at the exact same position, uh, at the default position that it gives me, which will be right up against the end of the previous disk. Uh, a partition. Uh, this one is going to be 250 megabytes. And this, it, it's technically right there. Hit uh, uh, enter equals 8300. Uh, 8, that is the Linux system. But let's go ahead and go through that again. And oh, did I miss it? Looks like I did. Oh, well. Uh, so you're going to want to in, uh, though you're going to want to enter in 8300. 
This will create a standard partition. Uh, this we're going to call uh, boot. Go ahead and write that. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. And then we're going to go down to the last of the free space. New. Default section and default size. And 8300. Yep. And then this we'll just call home. All right. So we got technically three sections. We got EFI, boot, and home. All right. Write that. Yes. Write operation has completed successfully. Quit that system. And type in clear. Clear will wipe off the entire video, uh, the entire screen of all the data that was previously there. All right. Now we're going to make the... Uh, uh, formats. We're going to format the partitions. So uh, you want to enter in mkfs dot virtual fat space uh, s dash capital F 32 and dev dash uh, damn it, SDA 1. So we're going to be formatting uh, the standard drive alignment, partition 1, into a FAT32 format. That is our EFI. Created. Now we're going to make extend, uh, make uh, FS format system dot ext2 slash dev slash sda Two, and it writes, and we're gonna. If you hit the up arrow key on the keyboard, it will bring up the most recent command. Let's just take this back. Extension four, two, drive three. And this is going to take a lot longer because it's a much larger drive. Uh, blah 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 blah. And it is created. There we go. Zero users. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, normally, this guide that I use tells me to encrypt it, uh, to encrypt partition three. I'm not going to be encrypting partition three because it's a virtual drive. I'm not going to be really using this to house any real data or anything. It's just going to be me getting used to Arch Linux. So I don't care if if they can get to my virtual drive, they've already gotten onto my system. If they can get onto my system, then that means that they're already in Windows, which there technically isn't that impossible. Or they're in, uh, hacked in through my Linux drive, which if they did that, kudos on them. Kudos on them. So we're going to mount the many, uh, the different partitions to their uh, designated areas. So, uh, all right, make. Uh, oh. So we're going to make directory empty mount dash boot. Enter, and then we're going to mount slash uh, dev slash sda2 to uh, not back not uh, damn it sda2 to mount boot enter uh, I created that what, what do you mean you're telling me that Oh, I know what I did wrong. I forgot this slash. Ha ha. There we go. Uh, now we're going to make directory mount slash boot slash EFI. 
and then you're going to m and a uh, mount slash dev slash sda one to space slash mnt slash boot slash efi and then you're going to finally mount slash dev slash sda three to slash mnt and there we go all the designated uh, partitions are now sent to their proper uh, mounting locations. Uh, so that is that for the pre-prep. Now we're going to actually install Arch Linux onto the system. So you're going to type in packstrap slash mnt space base space uh, base space base those are two words that sound way too much together uh, base slash delve grub slash efi space uh, hold on uh, slash x 86 I am very bad at typing sometimes guys uh, underscore 64 get EFI boot manager dialog space WAPA underscore uh, uh, Utsu enter now we're going to play the waiting game. I'm going to speed roll this so that way you guys aren't sitting here forever. And we're back. Okay, so as you're watching, there's a countdown uh, amongst things that uh, that indicate where it is in the process, both uh, for ins uh, downloading as well as installation. Uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to generate the FS tab or F stab, whichever you choose to call it. Just uh, don't stab anyone. So. The command for this is literally just that, gen f uh, fs tab, and then you're going to do two arrows to show that you want this information put into your dash uh, mount sl uh, slash etc slash fs tab. Enter. Maybe it's done on... Oh, that's unusual. It says that that is... Mm, that's giving me the frowny face, so that usually that means that it didn't work. Uh, maybe... Oh. Uh, gen FS tab slash PU space I forgot the mount. Slash MNT right carrots slash mnt slash etc slash uh, fs tab let's see if it yeah that works oh yeah let's see 
So, now we've done all we can from the uh, position of the ISO. And now we need to change it over to root. So we're going to go arch, uh, oops, arch dash c root, ch root. So it says arch change root uh, slash mount slash bin bash. Bin bash is, a, is the command shell that most people work in. Uh, bash scripting is 90% of what makes uh, of what people do within the terminal of of uh, Linux. So you're going to hit enter. Look at that. It's changed. Now I am no longer red root operating off of ISO. That's what the tilde is to within the system. So from here, you're going to set the time. Uh, let's see. Uh, time, 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 time. There we go. Okay. So, I know uh, what it is for me, but let's just go ahead and go through the learning. You would type in ls slash user slash share slash zone info. Here it shows you where everything is, uh, where most of the major areas are. Uh, Greenwich Mean Witch Time, America, Africa, Arctic, Asia, Atlantic, uh, Australia, Brazil, blah, 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 blah. And you can work your way down that. So I could hit up and type in uppercase A, America, and it will give me a list. Oh, look at that. Los Angeles right there. So I will even furthermore hit, I, I will hit up once more slash Los Angeles. And then what you'll want to do from here is carrot, uh, right carrot to etc slash local, uh, not local, locale time. Uh, here in America, we would say locale time anyways, uh, to show that, you know, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. So it should say locale time. I know in probably England and most of Europe, it would say, they would pronounce it as local time. Enter. Can't, can't. Oh, I forgot. Change that L in uh, that S into an N. Uh, what, what, oh, other part, dash, uh, space dash S. Uh, so this is saying, uh, super user, uh, or, um, sudo. Command S is, I guess, equivalent to sudo, or, uh, super user, you know, uh, or supplement, I think. It's telling, hey, take this line, I'm the command, I'm the controller, take this line and place it in this directory. Enter, and it is, it's not giving me any fails uh, access. So that means this time I did it right. All right. So let's see. From here, you want to tell it to hardware clock. That's uh, W. Uh, HW clock dash 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 S Y S T. Uh, I'm gonna use a a lot of things. I'm gonna say a lot of things that are probably not a hundred percent accurate. This is just what I've been picking up from my own st stupidity, and you know, just fooling around with things. So, um, hardware clock. Tell uh, the system uh, system time overhead changer to the user time content or uh, UTC. Enter. Does not. Uh, I always get this thing mixed up. Uh, so. Mm. 
So it's S Y S T O H C, not C H. I want to make it into a word. I always constantly think it as a word. There we go. Did it. Now I'm going to I am going to name my box, uh, my computer. So nano for slash etc slash host name. Well, look at that name. Me good at spelling. Now I can change the host name. I'm just going to name this Arch VBox because uh, it's my Arch Virtual Box. Uh, Command O will tell you to write name to file. Uh, write file name to write. Hit Enter, and then Control X will bring you out there. Clear that up, and let's see. Uh, and now for the local language. Now the uh, so what you'll do with this is nano slash etc slash locale dot conf. In the conf file, you will type in uppercase L-A-N-G e uh, G equals lowercase E-N underscore U uh, uppercase U-F dot uh, U-S dot U-T-F dash eight enter uppercase language uh, equals E-N underscore us and then finally lc underscore all equals c these are things that I don't know why well I am assuming that it has to do with language case uh, you know it wants to know what language you're going to be dealing with and as well as what language to be putting out I know it's been saying everything in English uh, but it's it's not always so, especially when you have a graphical interface installed. So, next part, we're going to change the password for root. Uh, pass wd. Enter. And then you're going to enter in whatever password it is that you think would be unbreakable for your root password. Make sure your root password is not the same thing as your account password. That will create a lot of problems. Uh, next part, we're going to create an actual user. Uh, the actual, you know, the user that once we get in a graphical interface rolling, it will be able to uh, latch onto something that you'll be that you'll have from a list as opposed to oh you can't see this I'll oh, just type in uh, hit this button and just enter in the root information so let's see user add space M space G space users sp space dash upper case G and you will give it wheel power uh, dash s dash uh, slash bin uh, so this is the part where it comes into it tells me that I am supposed to go uh, slash bin slash z s h and then I type in my username I go with g soto uh, and then Let's change the password for the user. Password, just like before. But this time, type in the user. So, gsoto. And then it will tell me to enter in my new password. New password updated successfully. Yeah. All right. 
so it tells me to that I have to configure uh, MK in septo in in se uh, needed for the in intrad image. Uh, let's do what it says slash etc slash uh, MK I N I T C P I O dot conf enter. Uh, vin is not a uh, command found. So I'm going to have to skip this. I bet it has to do with the encryption that I skipped earlier. Oh well. So let's just go to uh, the grub install. So you're going to go grub dash install space slash dev slash sda enter. It is now going to... Ah, uh, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, warning, this partition contains no BIOS. Boot. No, that, that's bullshit. I've got boot. I got a boot. I I had the boot mounted. Uh, grub install warning. Embedding is not possible. Grub can only be installed the system by using blockless. However, blockless are unreliable and in and their use is discouraged will not proceed with block lists uh, all right I'm just going to do a grub installed block list I guess it might be that maybe it's the same thing uh, pseudo uh, target and uh, let's see um, okay I'm gonna try this. Uh, and let's see what happens. I'm going to leave out the pseudo. Grub-install space dash dash target uh, equals i386 dash pc space dash dash force dash uh, dev SDA, uh, SDA, just SDA. Let's see how that works. Uh, perhaps I got to point it at something. So, uh, if I remember right... Uh, the partition that I have for boot was, uh, let's see, two. Okay, so maybe I got to do it on SDA2. Uh, now possible partition contains no bios of partitions. All right. Um... Maybe one? Alright. Fuck it. Let's go with three. I have a feeling that three isn't going to help. Yeah. So. Alright. I can't install Grub. If I can't install Grub, then I can't get the system operating. If I can't get the system operating, then there's no point in continuing forward on the current uh, method that I have uh, laid out before me. And I will need to concur with a friend in order to find out where I went wrong. So, all right. Uh, I'll, I, I think I'm going to do this as a weekly... Weekly... Or, no... Not a weekly, as a, uh, like, twice a week thing. Like, once, maybe on Sundays when I'm not really doing anything. And then another time, probably on Wednesday. Unless something has come up. Oh! Friends online. Yeah, well, that's cool. Uh, so, thank you all very much for anybody that watched this. And uh, have a great day.